Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Metal Hellsinger for PC, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. What you're seeing here is the PC version. This is a first-person shooter developed by The Outsiders and published by Funcom. It was first released for PC and current-gen consoles in September of last year, with the PS4 and Xbox One versions coming out in December. Upon its release, it was generally pretty well received, especially with regards to its soundtrack. So much so, in fact, that it got nominated for Best Audio Awards at numerous award ceremonies, although it only won a couple of them, and that's not exactly surprising given that last year was kind of stacked as far as audio design was concerned. Anyway, as far as what we're dealing with here, it is a pretty interesting game because it is a rhythm-based first-person shooter, which is not something we get a lot of. The only other one I can think of off the top of my head is BPM Bullets Per Minute, which I covered in a multi-game MTO a while back and really didn't care for, mostly because it was very much more of a roguelite than just a first-person shooter. But thankfully, that didn't sour me to the entire concept of a rhythm-based first-person shooter. It seemed like something that could be interesting if done well, and done in a proper single-player campaign context. Q Metal Hellsinger, which I covered the demo of previously in a Steam Next Fest video, and I found that it showed quite a bit of promise, although the soundtrack was subjectively a bit of a problem for me. I did, however, say that I would take another look at the game once it was fully out and see if I could manage to overcome that soundtrack hurdle and get through the entire thing, which has resulted in this review, so obviously I was able to get through the entire game. Let's just go ahead and start delving into it and find out what we're dealing with then. And like always, we'll go ahead and start with the presentation, which runs on the Unity engine and looks quite good and runs quite well. Modeling, textures, animations, and particle effects all look very good, and it's all rendered with an aesthetic that is very appropriate for an action-packed romp through hell. Now sure, it's not a graphical powerhouse, it doesn't have any really fancy tech on display or anything like that, but they set out to make this game's imagery a love letter to all of the subject matter and imagery of heavy metal, and they have absolutely nailed that. And as I mentioned previously, the performance is rock solid, which is exactly the kind of thing you want in a rhythm-based game. You do not want that frame rate to be fluctuating wildly and potentially throwing you off beat. That doesn't happen in Metal Hellsinger, at least not on my rig, which admittedly is more powerful than most. RTX 3080 12GB model, Ryzen 9 5900X and 64GB of RAM. Obviously, depending on your own hardware, the performance is going to vary and you might have to adjust the visual settings a bit, but as a point of comparison, I was running this thing maxed out at 1080p and it never went below 100 frames per second, so take that for what it's worth. So the visuals and the performance are all good, but what about the sound? Well, that is, to some degree, the star of the show. Mostly with regards to the soundtrack, which I'll talk about in a moment. First, I want to talk about the actual sound effects and the voice acting. Sound effect-wise, they've done a pretty good job with it overall. The gun and explosion sounds are alright, but they tend to get lost in the music, which is admittedly kind of what you would expect from a rhythm-based first-person shooter, so you get the weird effect of not having particularly impressive gun and explosion sounds, which would normally negatively impact the game and make the gunplay less satisfying, but because it's a rhythm-based first-person shooter and you're far more focused on the beat of the soundtrack, you don't notice it as much. What you do notice is that the sound effects change depending on whether you're on beat or off beat, which is a bit of a helpful indicator that you've gone off rhythm and need to readjust. So there is that. And then there's the voice acting, which consists of two characters. There's Paz, the narrator of the campaign, and the Red Judge, who is the main antagonist. And that's it and they are voiced by Troy Baker and Jennifer Hale, respectively. And while they do a pretty decent job, it's hard to escape the fact that Paz just sounds like Troy Baker doing a slight southern accent, and that's about it. But here's the thing. The main part of the presentation that actually matters is the soundtrack, which is a heavy metal soundtrack composed specifically for the game, featuring vocals by a variety of well-known metal vocalists. This has a few effects, the first of which is that it brings some star power to the game, of course, including some of the most heavy metal vocals that Serge Tankian has done in a very long time, which is always nice to see. The second is that when those lyrics kick in, you get some pretty powerhouse metal vocals, resulting in the already kick-ass metal instrumentals getting even more kick-ass when the whole thing's brought together, 
And then there's the third thing, which is entirely subjective and purely a me problem, which is a lot of the vocals are that death metal growling and screaming, which I utterly despise. They are the kind of thing that will instantly put me off of any song that I'm listening to. I might be completely jamming out to the instrumentals, and all of a sudden that death metal growling and screaming kicks in, and I'm instantly going, okay, nope, I'm done. I've basically had to write off entire genres of metal that I otherwise would like just because I can't stand the vocals. And that's a lot of the vocals in Metal Hellsinger. It's a situation where the vocals are completely appropriate for the game, and if you like that kind of thing, you'll probably love them. But since I can't stand that kind of vocals, I am constantly in a state of getting really into the music and then getting put off by the music in equal measure. And as you might expect in a game where the rhythm is important, that's actually a bit of an issue. But again, it's more of a personal problem than anything else, so your mileage will definitely vary on that. Because the thing is, if you discount the vocals that are the death metal growling and screaming and such, the soundtrack kicks all kinds of ass, and the melodic vocals are great. It's just that, again, I can't personally stand the death metal growling, so it's very hot-cold with that. So when you bring all of that presentation together, you end up with something that is extremely fitting for the theme they're going for, that being metal as hell, but your mileage is definitely going to vary depending on how you like your metal vocals. But of course, what really matter here are the story and the gameplay, and the story in this is that you play as a lost soul known simply as The Unknown, who is fighting her way through the various hells in order to reclaim her voice which was stolen from her upon entering the hells. The Unknown is assisted in this endeavor by the sapient Skull Paz, who pulls multiple duties as the game's narrator, of course the Unknown's traveling companion in terms of plot, and as one of the available weapons. All the while they're fighting their way through the Hells, the leader of the Hells, known as the Red Judge, is trying to stop them, especially after an ancient prophecy surfaces that refers to the Hell Singer, someone whose voice will basically rend heaven and hell alike. And while there are a few secrets that get unveiled over the course of the game, mostly at the very end of it really, there's just not a whole lot going on with the storyline. It's a rather simple setup, and while they do throw in those reveals mostly at the end of the game, there's simply not enough substance in the storyline to really be able to latch onto it. It's not terrible, of course, because this is, after all, a first-person shooter, and story usually isn't anywhere near as important in first-person shooters as it is in certain other genres, and this one is no exception, but it is hard to escape the feeling that the plot was rushed, like they just ran out of time, or they didn't really know how they wanted to conclude everything, so they just quickly threw everything together at the end and said, okay, we're done. It's just an awkward conclusion that does leave the plot open for a potential sequel or a DLC that's going to have you fight your way through heaven, I suppose, but who knows what's going to happen with that. Maybe we'll get a sequel, maybe we won't, it just remains to be seen. But of course, since this is an almost exclusively gameplay-focused title, you're probably not going to care all that much about the storyline or really even how it concludes. So, what is the gameplay of Metal Hellsinger? Well, that's where things do get interesting, because this is, as I mentioned before, a rhythm-based first-person shooter. Meaning that you're not simply running through the levels and blasting all the enemies like you would expect to do in pretty much any other first-person shooter. Sure, a lot of that is going to be very familiar to you if you've played pretty much any other first-person shooter out there, especially if you've played more retro ones, or the games that had a bit more of a direct influence on Metal Hell Singer that came out more recently, Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal. What exactly do I mean by all of that? Well, I mean that the way the game is structured, you fight your way through the various hells, and that means you're going on a very linear progression. Each level is constructed so that you have effectively a corridor leading to a combat arena. Once you find your way into the combat arena, it blocks off the exits and then just starts spawning in enemies for you to fight until eventually you've defeated enough of them, at which point you can destroy the obstruction leading to the rest of the level and then continue on to the next combat arena, so on and so forth until eventually you get to the end of the level and you have a boss fight. Once you've defeated that boss, then you can move on to the next level. As you navigate the levels, you'll be making use of the double jump as well as the dash maneuver, and you'll also be finding a variety of weapons to use. You start with two weapons that are always going to be equipped throughout the rest of the game, 
those being the sword, which is a pretty basic melee weapon, as well as Paz the Skull, who spits fireballs at things. And as you progress through the rest of the campaign, you'll unlock additional weapons that you can then select in your loadout going from level to level. These are a shotgun, dual revolvers, a crossbow that shoots explosive bolts, and two sickle-like blades that you can throw at enemies and they come back to you. There's also an additional gun that they added in the Dream of the Beast DLC, which I don't have because I don't have that DLC, but it's always available right from the get-go if you have that DLC installed. You have a total of four weapon slots, with two of them being locked, those being the sword and Paz the Skull, and then the other two are free for you to choose whichever weapons you have unlocked, as long as you're not going into a level where you have yet to unlock the weapon within it. Before you've unlocked all of the weapons, you always have to keep at least one slot free so that you can pick up whatever the new weapon in that next level is. And while the actual weapon count is fairly low, each of them does feel pretty satisfying to use, and they get a bit more mileage out of them by having not just your primary fire, but also an ultimate attack that requires you to build up a meter as you slaughter your foes, and you can trigger that to get some really powerful benefits out of them. For example, when you activate the ultimate attack on the revolvers, it spawns a copy of yourself that will auto-track targets and shoot at them, and when you activate it on the sickle-like blades, it sends them spiraling out in an arc around you and just eviscerates pretty much anything around you. And for these weapons, the meter builds up separately, so you can have the meter built up on one of your two extra weapons and then you can just switch to the other one and build up meter on that, and then you can just hold on to those ultimate attacks for when you actually need to use them. And even though there's not a whole lot of variety with the weapons even with those ultimate attacks, they still managed to make them quite satisfying to use, so it ended up being a quality over quantity situation. And unlike in, say, Doom Eternal, where you're constantly having to go find enemies to chainsaw because your ammo count is so low, in Metal Hellsinger, you never actually run out of ammo. You do have to reload, but apart from having to reload, you have infinite ammunition. Sort of like how it's handled in the likes of Overwatch. Once you've finished a level for the first time, then you unlock challenge mode for that level, which allows you to go back and complete challenges based on that level in order to unlock sigils. These give you additional bonuses, such as being able to preserve your streak more easily, or having some additional damage output or things like that, and you have two sigil slots on your loadout for any given level, so you can mix and match those to your heart's content once you've unlocked enough of them. That's all stuff that could be in pretty much any first-person shooter these days, but where Metal Hellsinger sets its apart is the fact that it is rhythm based so you're not simply using all of these various abilities and weapons and such you're having to time everything to the beat if you want to be successful there are three levels of timing where you have off beat and then you have good and perfect the closer your attack is to the beat the higher damage it's going to do the closer your dash is to the beat then the quicker your dash reset is, then the quicker you can get back to chaining those together. If you attack an enemy off beat, then it does a lot less damage, and if you dash off beat, then the reset for dashing again is just a bit longer, so you need to get back on beat if you want to keep moving around more smoothly. Even when you go to reload, there's an active reload mechanic where if you hit the reload button again on the beat, then it gets you back into the action more quickly. In addition, as you fight your way through the game, you will be gradually building up the Fury Gauge. The higher the gauge gets, the more intense the music gets, until eventually when you max out the gauge, the vocals will finally kick in, and the higher the Fury Gauge gets, the more damage you do to enemies and the higher score you earn. So obviously, the longer you can maintain maxed out Fury, the better. You have three ways of doing this. The first of them is simply to remain on beat as much as you possibly can. If you start getting attacks that are off beat, it cuts into the Fury Meter a bit more quickly. The second is to avoid getting hit. As you get hit, the Fury Meter depletes. And the third is that you can use Paz the Skull to maintain the Fury Gauge even when there aren't any enemies to be attacking. And while admittedly I'm not all that good at rhythm games like, say, Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Dance Dance Revolution, anything like that, staying on beat and maintaining that Fury Gauge at maximum as long as you can is remarkably tricky, especially if you're playing the game on a higher difficulty setting. 
And even if you're playing on the more medium difficulty setting, you still need to be careful there because if you take hits, then you take a surprisingly large amount of damage and can't take all that many hits before you go down. That's where the health regen system comes into play because this doesn't have regenerating health or anything like that. It does have a health meter that you can replenish either by shooting one of the green crystals that are scattered around the levels and going close enough to absorb the health motes, or by slaughtering an enemy as the game refers to it. It's basically the equivalent of a Doom 2016 or Doom Eternal glory kill, where the enemy will go into a stun state and then you can press a button to do a melee finisher on them, which will then replenish your health. But the trick there is that the slaughter move won't function unless you get it on the beat. So even your method of replenishing your health ties into the game's music and rhythm-based gameplay. And the further you get into the game, the more tricky all of this gets, because they start introducing more enemy types as you progress that have a variety of different attacks, some of which are very simple, like just trying to run up to you and smack you upside the head, some of which are shooting at you, some of which hit you with attacks that can actually slow you down and throw you off beat, and all manner of stuff in between. In addition, once you get into the boss fights, things get tricky as well, because the further you get into the game, the more bullet hell those fights get. That's a bit of a problem for me, because I really don't like bullet hell, and I'm not very good at bullet hell. So your mileage is definitely going to vary on that, and I found that in particular, the final boss fight, while thematically very cool and with a soundtrack that kicked all kinds of ass, because that's where they reserved Surge Tankian for, it actually ended up being a rather frustrating fight, simply because it was so heavily bullet hell. Again, though, your mileage is going to vary on that, depending on how much you like bullet hell. But regardless of how those boss fights are, the actual experience of playing through the vast majority of Metal Hellsinger is actually quite solid. When everything's firing on all cylinders, when you actually get really into that beat and you're on beat all the time, it's actually a really satisfying gameplay experience. But there are a few problems here. The first of them is that the level design is very simple. I mean, it's basically going from corridor to very basic combat arena to corridor to combat arena throughout the entire game. And there's just not a whole lot of variety to it other than the aesthetics changing from level to level. There's also not really anything in the way of secrets to find. I mean, there are medals that you can find throughout the levels that will gradually allow you to unlock skins for your weapons, but they're basically pointless otherwise, and they're in pretty obvious locations that you don't have to go out of your way to find, so there's not really any secret hunting to be had here. The second problem is that the game is very, very short, and by that I mean I finished it in around 2 hours and 40 minutes, including all of the cutscenes. And that wouldn't necessarily be that much of a problem if the game actually had a good amount of replay value. Because there's not much you can do after you finish the campaign. You can go back and you can play through the levels again on a higher difficulty setting, or just trying to get a higher score in general. Or you can go back and complete the challenge mode for the various levels, which is still just replaying those levels again, but with different challenges applied. And the only real incentives there are that they unlock sigils, which I've already talked about, and that you can get more of those medals, which will allow you to unlock skins for your weapons. That's really it. And when you take that as a whole package, you find that there's just not a whole lot going on with Metal Hellsinger. That doesn't mean it's a bad game, far from it, it's just that there's a bit of a value proposition issue. Because MSRP on the game is $30 US or whatever your regional equivalent is. And while I can certainly see paying that much if you're an absolute diehard fan of rhythm-based first-person shooters, Let's face it, rhythm-based first-person shooters basically aren't a thing other than Metal Hellsinger and BPM bullets per minute, so how would you know whether those are your kind of thing or not? That means that for everybody else, $30 is a bit pricey for what you're getting here. And I do ultimately have to keep that in mind when coming to a recommendation here. Because at the end of the day, Metal Hellsinger is a rather solid first-person shooter experience that is a bit fresh and different because of the rhythm-based gameplay. It is fun, it does have a kick-ass soundtrack, apart from the whole death metal growling thing that I generally despise anyway, but that's just a personal problem more than anything else. And I can very easily see myself recommending the game overall if you're a fan of first-person shooters, if you like rhythm games, or you're just curious about them, but not necessarily at full price. That ultimately puts it at the 3.5 out of 5 on my scale. It is ultimately worth playing, and I do recommend it, 
just maybe wait for a sale if you're curious, but not necessarily sold on it right now. Thank you all very much for watching. If you like my videos, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. If you can't afford to or don't want to, that is perfectly fine. I understand, but the option's there if you're interested. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in later videos.